Hey, as we approach the end of the year, it's important to take a step back and reflect on what you've accomplished so far and where you want to go. So in this video, I'm going to give you five business tips that will help set you and your cannabis business up for success in the new year. So let's get to it. Hi folks, Chip Schweiger, the Greenleaf CPA, and I help everyday cannabis entrepreneurs build and grow exceptional businesses using the same growth tips that the big guys use. Welcome to Ask the Greenleaf CPA. As we approach the end of the year, it's really important to take a step back and reflect on what you've accomplished so far and where you want to go. So in this video, which is actually the second in a two-part series, I'm going to give you five business tips that will help you achieve your goals for next year. So whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or someone who's been in the industry for a long while, these tips will help you get your business moving in the right direction. Now, I did a video of the five business tips for the end of the year, and I'll put a link to that down below so that you can check it out. In this video, though, we're going to go into talk about the five things you can do to prepare for next year and to make it the best one yet. Hey, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you'll always be the first to get my tips and tricks. So let's talk about the five things you should take care of before the new year becomes reality. Okay. Once you pull together all the material for your year end planning that I talked about in the last video, it's super easy to plan for the next year. With your business needs and goals clearly visible, your planning will be less time consuming and more convenient. So here's what you can do now to get a head start on the new year. And the first tip for your new year planning is the most crucial, and that's to plan your goals for the next year. Your review of the prior year's goals should have given you a clear picture of some of your New Year's business goals and ideas. But now is the time to formalize them, write them down, and communicate them to your team. Consider if you want to focus on increasing sales or improving profitability. Either of them will drive slightly different plans. How about expanding your locations or hiring new employees? Many cannabis businesses suffer from poor inventory record keeping and less than robust cash counting procedures. So if that sounds like your business, especially if you're a dispensary, I'd make a focused area and make that a business goal and hold your team to it. And while we're talking about your team, is it time to institute more thorough training or even get written, documented, or refreshed SOPs in place? And if your business plan involves focusing more on profitability, then obviously you're gonna look for places to reduce costs, but you'll need to consider which ones and how you will do that. Now you can only cut costs so much, so finding the right ones are absolutely key. And in 28 years in this business, I've seen several companies, many companies actually, that cut too much, and it gets really ugly. Now don't, of course, rely on past goals to chart your course for the new year. They're crucial, but they're not sufficient. Did circumstances or changes in the past year point out a need for new goals for you? Interest rates, for example, are continuing to rise. So could you get a loan for your business needs or refinance your current funding before those interest rates go higher? If your financial statements indicated a need for improvement, how can you improve those? What are the most advantageous ways to do so? This is a place for some expert opinions and advice about growing in the new year. Also, think about did your tax position indicate you could benefit from a new corporate structure, such as converting to an S corporation? Hey, while we're talking about S corporations, I've also got a video on that and what you should consider. And that's down in the comments below as well. So you can check it out later, but keep watching now because we've got four more tips to go. Okay. The second tip for the new year and to get it off to a fast start is to develop action plans based on your goals. Now, once you've determined your key goals in the new year, you've got to devise an action plan for each of them. Otherwise they're just a wish list. The best goals are smart, they're specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, realistic, and time-based. Break down each of your goals down into daily bite-sized chunks. Pinpoint the key metrics you can measure and assess on an ongoing basis. What can you and your employees achieve? How many months or quarters will it take for you to achieve them? Whatever your goals are, the most important thing you can do now is write down your plan to achieve them. Now, this point was driven home recently by a study published in the British Journal of Health Psychology. So check this out. The project was designed to see what impact stimuli would have on a participant's level of exercise. 
So researchers divided a random sample of participants into three different groups. For the first group, the researchers asked the participants to track how frequently they exercised. They were told to read a passage of an unrelated book before beginning their exercise. For the second group, researchers wanted to measure the impact that motivation would have on their exercise levels. So the second group was also asked to track their activity levels and were then told to read a book's motivational passage that outlined the benefits of exercise for maintaining a healthy weight. And here's where it gets really interesting. The third group was asked to read the same motivational excerpt as the second group, but had the additional task of writing down their exercise goals for the coming week. Now, when the researchers sat down to analyze the results, they were shocked to find out that among the motivated group, which was group two, just 35% of them exercised once per week. That was slightly less than the exercise than in group one, which is about 36%, even though group two were the ones that were motivated to work out. Now, when the researchers analyzed the third group's exercise law, they were stunned to find out that 91% of them had worked out. The only difference between groups two and group three was that the third group was asked to write down their goals. That simple task seems to have almost tripled their likelihood of success. Now, the researchers concluded that motivation alone has virtually no impact on our actions. Instead, it's motivation coupled with a written action plan of how you're going to achieve your goals that has the most significant impact on your results. Food for thought as you start thinking about making next year your best year yet. Okay, the third tip to make the new year your best one yet is to create your marketing plans. Late in the current year or very early in the new one is a great time to plan your marketing campaigns for the new year. After all, you don't want to be the best kept secret in town. What areas of marketing will you focus on? Is it social media? Is it video or content production? Do you need to hire staff to plan your marketing? Or maybe you need to change your marketing or keep it constant. Do you have any data on what your customers responded to last year or even customers like your customers? And I'm telling you, this is really the secret sauce to a successful cannabis business. With as much competition as we're seeing in the marketplace right now, you've got to go the extra step in understanding what your customers want and then developing a plan of how you're going to give it to them. Growing great weed is great, but if nobody knows about it and if you haven't differentiated yours from theirs, it's not going to help and marketing is how you do that. So think about if there are specific areas or product that you need to focus on in the new year. Should you target or emphasize a new demographic, a new sector, or maybe hop on one of the new trends in the cannabis industry? Okay, the fourth tip to make the new year your best one yet is to plan time to keep all of your financial and tax records up to date. If you haven't been keeping important financial statements up to date each quarter, Book time in the new year to do just that. Do the same for your tax records and any meetings with accountants or other financial advisors. And if you don't have someone handling that for you and you really don't want to do it yourself, and I mean, let's be honest, who really likes to do that other than accountants? Then find someone to do it for you. The money that you'll pay will more than come back to you in terms of time saving. Staying on top of your business taxes and business performance will decrease the work that you need to do at the end of next year. It's like this never-ending cycle of either happiness or despair. And the fifth tip to make the new year your very best one yet is to assess employee engagement. Do you need to review your compensation and benefit structures to make sure that they're in line with our industry and your region and your business values? Morale could suffer if this doesn't occur at least once a year. If the compensation and benefits you offer aren't competitive with the marketplace, your top people could walk out the door, leaving you with gaps to fill. Do you have promotional plans in place? Companies that do reap significant gains in loyalty and longevity of their employees. And keep those employee morale events going too. Again, you want to foster job satisfaction and loyalty to keep your top-notch people. What events or spiffs do you do the most and that are the most popular? what returns the most to the company for the expenditures that you spend. Planning for the year allows you to choose the times that are advantageous to you and to everyone else on your staff. Some companies host summer barbecues or spring hikes as get-togethers, for instance. But just do what works best for your company. And while we're talking about it, don't forget to plan vacations both for yourself 
and for your employees. For yourself, map out what you'd like to do and when is the most advantageous time to do that for the business. Many small business owners like to take their vacations when their business is known to have downtime or at least less than busy periods. And it's a good idea to have your employees give you or their supervisors their vacation plans far enough in advance to know when you have enough coverage and when you may not. If there are any peak periods when a cluster of vacations might be problematic, let employees and supervisors know so that they can plan accordingly. Okay, so there's quite a bit of things to think about, but don't panic. Get some help, get some support, and take everything as it comes. And if you've got questions about assessing your goals or applying these tips or strategically thinking about your business, check out my website at www.thegreenleafcpa.com. There's a ton of good stuff there. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give us a like. And if you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. And if there is anything I missed, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. It just makes these videos better when I get to help you with your cannabis business. Now we drop new episodes each week, so I hope you'll join us again. We'll see you.